What's going on guys, Hayden back. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to install press-in wheel bearings on my 2010 Mazda 3 without a press, without a shop press. Now most think that this job could literally be impossible without using a shop press, but I'm gonna show you how to do this at home, in your garage, or even in a parking lot. So definitely stay tuned, subscribe, and let's get into today's episode. First step is to jack the car up, and since I'm replacing the wheel bearings on both sides, I can lift the car from the subframe and put jack stands on either side. Once the wheel's off the ground, make sure to place it under the pinch weld as a safety precaution in case, God forbid, the jack stand fails. So guys, with the wheel off the car, before we start taking all this apart, I wanna show you the tools that we're pretty much going to need that will avoid using a shop press and also the parts that we're gonna need. So first off, this is the main tool that we're gonna be using. And what's super cool about this is it's called the EverTough Master Wheel Hub and Bearing Remover 67213. Now, this right here is a $400 tool, but if you have an O'Reilly's near you, or it's definitely worth the trip, you could see, $400 here. You actually can rent this tool for 48 hours and get your money back completely free if you return it within 48 hours. And you can see right on here, must return within 48 hours for refund. So it's that simple. And this is gonna be the main tool for pressing that wheel bearing and the hub in and out of the car. And this is free. And this is what makes this job so much cheaper and easier instead of having to get a shop press. Now, if you're like me and like to be over-prepared and not under-prepared, I highly recommend you pick up as much as you can. And if you have some extra parts, you can always return it. Now, all this came from Amazon here, but what you're gonna need are some, I bought Tim Ken, this is Koyo, which is the actual OE, I believe, manufacturer for Mazda here. And this is the Tim Ken bearing that we're gonna be putting in a 2010 Mazda 3. This is the part number here, it is WB000028. That's for the press and wheel bearing. Just in case you might break an ABS sensor, it's good to remove them, but they usually get seized on. The next thing you're gonna need are some snap rings. This is the Tim Ken brand. I highly recommend you replace these while you're doing it. RAT166 is the part number. They look like this. This is what the snap ring looks like. It's good to throw these out, but you know, in an emergency, you can reuse them. But ideally that's what holds your wheel bearing in. So you're better off getting a new one here. And then the last thing, and again, I always say to be over-prepared than under-prepared, is these Dorman wheel hubs, 930003. Now the reason I recommend having these is because what's gonna happen is when we press out the wheel hub on the car, you're gonna have the inner race of the wheel bearing stuck on the hub. And that's hard to get off. So in the meantime, you can either A, go ahead and replace them, or B, I will show you how to reuse your wheel hubs if you think they are good. And I'll show you that later on in the video. Also a quick tip, in order to get these things in a lot easier, I've actually put the wheel bearings in the freezer overnight. This is the two wheel bearings, I'm doing both sides. And then these are, this is the brand new Dorman wheel hub. And then here's my old wheel hub that I'm gonna be putting in, you can see right here. The reason we put these in the freezer and get them super cold is because metal contracts when they're cold, which means it'll be easier to slide these in to the uh, knuckle when it comes time to press them. Starting off with the caliper, remove the metal clip and just unscrew the back two bolts. There's no reason to take the slider pins out as we're not changing the brake pads. The rotor should come off pretty easy. Then we can unscrew the CV axle bolt using a 32 millimeter socket, then take the dust shield off and remove the bolt holding the tie rod end in. Spray some penetrant in the bolt. And remember, it is very important that you do not whack it on the threads as tempting as it is, or you will 100% mushroom the threads and you will need to end up replacing it. So be patient and really whack the side of the knuckle and it will come off. Also remember to unclip the ABS sensor. Last up is the lower ball joint. To start, spray some WD-40 on the top, then hold onto one end of the bolt while you take the nut off and you can push it through. Making sure not to damage the rubber casing, I used a pickle fork to lightly loosen the ball joint from the knuckle. And then I could use my weight and push the lower control arm down and separate it from the knuckle itself. Then pull the CV axle out of the hub. So now that we've pretty much gotten everything out of the way that needs to go, we need to focus on getting this. And you can hear how bad it is. Listen to how gritty and sandy this is. Ew. 
This is supposed to spin and you're not supposed to hear anything. But do you hear all that sand? Well, dirt, grime, and rust can get in this and, and pretty much ruin it. And that's what's causing so much noise throughout the car. So this is a good test. Now what we're gonna have to do is get this hub off. We need to get this wheel hub off. And in order to do that, we're gonna have to find the right piece to put behind here. And I'm pretty sure all we're gonna just need to use is this. And I'll show you more about that in a second. And we're gonna have to push this out and then we'll have to work on the actual wheel bearing itself. Now, another test is also this up and down. You can hear it's also coming a little bit loose. Now, I'm not sure, but we'll see if this is on the new one too, but I don't think we're supposed to have that much play. Using a rental tool, I added a horseshoe adapter, holding it on with the two screws in the kit. Since we're trying to reuse the wheel hub, we don't want to damage the inner splines. So make sure to get a step washer that can fit in the hub and hold the bolt straight. Also, since this will be under a lot of force, make sure to liberally grease the bolt. Once installed, tighten the nut down until it centers itself on the back of the hub. I used a 24 inch adjustable wrench to hold the nut in place. And then I used a half inch breaker bar to start tightening the assembly. And the hub will slowly pull itself forward. I was wondering why it was so easy. So that would explain why it's so easy. Funny. And just like that, the old wheel hub is off and you can see what ends up happening is it ends up pulling the inner race of the wheel bearing out with it. And it actually gets stuck on the back of it here. So if you guys plan on reusing this wheel hub, I'm gonna show you an easy way to get this inner race off. There's really two ways. It's either with heat or by cutting it with a Dremel. I'm gonna use heat. It's the easiest, cleanest method because I don't wanna risk cutting into the, uh, the actual hub itself. So let me show you how to do that. And then after we do that, we have to get this uh, snap ring off. And you can see it's all rusty, which is why I recommend replacing it. But what I'm gonna do first is just put some WD-40 in here. Just let it sit while we mess with this thing. And hopefully it'll come out a little bit easier because these tend to seize up within the bearing as well or within the hub as well. So in order to get the inner race off this wheel bearing, it's pretty simple actually. Uh, you either need a torch, a Dremel, uh, but in this case, I, if you've watched any of my videos in the past, you'd know I love this magnetic induction heater for rusty cars. It makes easy work of rusty bolts and this is just another useful application. I'm gonna show you how to do it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna plop this on top like this. And what I actually made a custom coil. I just wrapped this one around the actual race itself. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna heat it up and what's gonna happen is it's just gonna fall all the way down to here using this induction heater. So let me set it up quick and I'll show you what it is that I'm gonna do. takes all the two seconds and we literally just slide it. This is probably pretty hot, but it just slides right off like butter. I absolutely love, 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 love this tool. Link in the description, go pick one up. I'm actually shocked at how difficult this snap ring is to remove. Uh, unfortunately, I broke the right side, so it's a good thing that I bought brand new ones because I was planning on reusing these. If you have a rusty car, the only way these are gonna come out is with a lot of WD-40. Uh, smacking the hell out of it. I'm using chisels. These are my favorite, the Pittsburgh. This is a full tang screwdriver. And uh, just tons of WD-40 and whack the hell out of it. And these 
needle nose vice grips got the job done here. We're, we're almost out of the woods, but I thought I was gonna have to uh, cut this out, which would have been a nightmare, but I'm glad finally I was able to grab onto it here and uh, we'll get it the rest of the way out. Also, a little bit of heat. I don't know how much this helped, but a little torch and I went around it, heated it up and then WD-40'd it. But anywho, finally it's coming out. <laughs> Holy cow, you can see I destroyed the end of it, but what a pain in the butt. Finally though, uh, we can now start getting ready to get this freaking wheel bearing out of here. Boy, oh boy. With the snap ring finally out of the hub, the, the knuckle, what we're gonna need to do is press this wheel bearing out. And what we're gonna need to find is one of these washers is gonna have to fit behind it, but not actually hit the ABS sensor since I'm leaving it in. And once we find that one, we're gonna try to press this wheel bearing out. Nope, but that fit way too perfect. I don't want that to get stuck. This has just enough play. Just enough play to, to come out. Hopefully you guys can see that. I use the cup adapter so the wheel bearing has a place to go when it comes out. Align the step washer on the outer race and install the nut. Now I tried using my breaker bar for this and even with all 200 pounds in me, I still couldn't push this thing down. The entire strut assembly kept squirming around when I applied pressure. So I decided to use my impact and I was shocked at how easy this thing made it look. Take a look, we are pushing her out. There we go. And she out. Arr! So if your car's rusty, I don't think a big old half inch breaker bar is gonna do it justice. You get a high torque, this is like 1200 foot pounds. Impact takes it right out. And this is also impact rated. Uh, I watched a video online. But look at that, like a boss. With the wheel bearing finally out of the hub, the next thing we need to do is go on and wire brush and just clean up the inside of here to get it ready for the new bearing. And then we are also gonna lube this because we want it going in as easy as possible. After a quick wire wheel, you can see the inner part of the hub is all nice and clean. So it's now time to lube this up, I think with some WD-40. And we're gonna lube up the wheel bearing and we're gonna press this bad boy in. Now it's time to install our frozen wheel bearing. Acting fast, press the wheel bearing into the hub so that it's even. Now the key here is to only apply pressure to the outer race of the wheel bearing. If you apply any pressure to the inside, you will destroy it and have to do this whole thing over again. So what better way to do that than with the old wheel bearing? You will need to put a step washer on the backside, just big enough to fit around the inner metal ring on the hub where the ABS sensor is. This way, when we start to tighten it, it will push the wheel bearing into the nut. I used an extended ratchet for this as it required way less force compared to removing it. You'll know when it's fully seated as the bearing will bottom out and you won't be able to turn the ratchet anymore. Then you can install the new snap ring. Make sure to give it a few taps just to make sure it's seated as well. Finally, it's time to install our new hub. This time, we need a step washer small enough to fit on the inner race of the wheel bearing on the back side of the knuckle. We will also need a step washer small enough to fit in the hub itself like before. Then we need to tighten everything down. You'll know when it's bottomed out.
just like that, we have a brand new wheel bearing and a used hub, but a cleaned up hub. And as you can see, there's no up and down play at all. So that other one was definitely bad. Everything's solid with this. It's supposed to be stiff, but it's perfect now. So now we can reassemble everything. We're good to go. Honestly, the hardest part is just removing that uh, seat, the snap ring and pulling out that, uh, that wheel bearing. I, I, honestly, if you get one of these bad boys, it makes light work of the job. This is a half inch, 296720. This is the impact. I got this on Facebook Marketplace for 200 bucks. And if you get this, then this job is, is light work. But um, after that, it's, it's now time to put everything back together. When reassembling, remember to put a little bit of anti-seize on the inside of the hub. This is to prevent the CV axle from getting stuck inside. Now, just do everything in reverse, remembering to torque everything to spec and you're done. So guys, that is how you install a wheel bearing and hub without a press on a 2010 Mazda 3. Now this can be applied to practically all cars that have a press in wheel bearing and probably all the CX-5s, Mazda 5s, Mazda 3s from the entire range. So of the Gen 2 or Gen 3, whatever. But that is how you do it. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know down in the comments below and I'll try to get to all you guys. Also, make sure to check the description for all of the necessary parts and even some of the necessary tools that I think you'll need to do this without a shop press or you could just go buy a shop press for like, wait for a Harbor Freight coupon for like, I don't know, 140 bucks and you can do that too. But this is how you do it uh, for a lot cheaper with just renting the tool from O'Reilly's. But with that being said, smash that like button, turn on post notifications, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Closer